Hi, and welcome to this video, where I'm going to tell you how you can get a better starting point when processing your Nikon RAW files in Darktable. While Darktable is an excellent piece of software to process RAW files in Linux, Darktable's default settings for processing Nikon RAW files could be better. It seems like Nikon RAW files has a profile attached with Nikon and other software uses, but Darktable does not or cannot use. With that profile, you will get a better starting point, and let me show you an example. This is a RAW file taken with my Nikon D7000 and taken at a high ISO. Let me just discard the history stack so we can see the dark table default. And here is the image. Taken at ISO 3200, it's quite a noisy picture, as you will see as I zoom in. The dark table default is to attach a base curve to the image, called Nikon-like alternative. There is also another base curve we can use, called Nikon D7000, but as you can see, there isn't much of a difference. So what happens if we don't use the default base curves, but rather uses the profile we can get out of our RAW file? This happens. As you can see, the noise level dropped quite a bit, in addition to the color changes. I feel like this is a much better starting point. Let me go back, and we can compare the difference. So how did I do this? Well, this is a one-time step, but it will take some time, and you will need Windows. If you dual boot into Windows, if you use a friend's laptop, or in my case use a virtual assistant software, you still need Windows. You also need to make a directory ready or a USB stick and fill it with a broad selection of different types of RAW files from your camera. In Windows, you also need to download and install Nikon software called View NX2. The first thing to do in Windows is to create a temporary folder where we're going to store our profiles before transferring them to Linux and Darktable. The next step is to open View NX2. Browse to the directory with your selection of RAW files. Press Ctrl A to select all files. Right click on any one of the files, choose Output and Convert Files. In the dialog box, set the file format to JPEG, choose the highest quality and press Change the image size and set the long edge to something really small. The reason behind this is to speed up the conversion process. When all is set, press Convert. As you can see, View NX is now creating some JPEG files. We are not really interested in those JPEG files, but we are interested in the profiles View NX is creating in this process. To locate those profiles, open the File Explorer and type in the path you now see on the screen. In that folder you'll see different types of bo both files and other folders. We're interested in the folder named NKN, some numbers, some letters and .tmp. Open that folder and you'll see the profiles we're looking for. Profiles are generated as long as UNX is running and processing raw files. It seems, however, there isn't generated a new profile as long as two RAW files are taken with the same camera settings. That's why we now have a lot less profiles than we have RAW files. Let's speed ahead. As you can see, now that View NX is done processing the RAW files, we have a lot of different profiles in our folder. Without closing View NX, copy all those profiles to the directory we created earlier on. It is now safe to close View NX. The next step is to transfer the files over to Linux and Darktable. Back in Linux, let's examine the files we have transferred. There are lots of different files with different file names, but using a checksum, we can see that several of the files have the exact same contents despite having different file names. 
since Darktable doesn't care about the file name, let's use this one liner to both rename the files and get rid of the duplicates. With the profiles renamed and ready, let's move them into Darktable. First go to your home directory. There you will go into the directory called .config slash Darktable. If it doesn't exist, create a folder called color, and inside color create a subdirectory called in. Then transfer all the profiles to this directory. The last step is to make Darktable use all of these profiles. If you haven't already, open up Darktable and import an image you want to test this on. When you have chosen an image, enter the dark room in Darktable and view the history stack. From within the history stack, choose the step before applying a base curve. Then you need to find a module called Input Color Profile. Here you can apply different types of profile to your image, including the new ones we just imported. The next step is of course to choose one of those profiles. By doing so you also notice that the image is way too dark. To correct that, find a module called Unbreak Input Profile. Select it and set its parameter linear to zero. And that's it really. As you know we have several different profiles to choose from, but in my experiments they don't differ too much. You can experiment yourself to see what profile is suitable for what image. And that's it. I hope you learned something new and thank you for watching.